This next, this next section is based on a poem by Essex Hempel, whose poetry evoked the challenges of being black, gay, and young in the midst of the AIDS epidemic. No music. No music. I told her I was going to tell you to do that. Um, who evoked the challenges of being black, gay, and young in the midst of the AIDS epidemic, critiquing homophobia and heterosexism within the black community, sexism amongst gay men and of racism among gay whites served as reminders that being oppressed does not mean one is unable to oppress others. Hempel argued that homosexism did not constitute a whole life, nor did it negate my racial identity, and challenged himself to integrate all of my identities as a functioning self instead of accepting a dysfunctional existence as the consequence of my homosexual desires. He was prominently featured in the films Tongues United and Looking for Langston and Black Is, Black Ain't. Hempel gave voice and metaphor to the lives of American, African American gay men. He died in 1995 due to AIDS-related illnesses. In America, I place my ring on your cock where it belongs. No horsemen bearing terror, no soldiers of doom will swoop in and sweep us apart. They're too busy looting the land to watch us. They don't know we need each other critically. They expect us to call in sick, watch television all night, die by our own hands. They don't know we're becoming powerful. Every time we kiss, we confirm the new world coming. What the rose whispers before blooming, I vow to you, I give you my heart, a safe harbor. I give you promises other than milk, honey, liberty. I assume you will always be a Free man with a dream. America, place your ring on my cock where it belongs. Long may we live to free this. man named Chip. Um, when did you know you were queer? Hmm. Much earlier on, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if I were to think about the definition of what that means, right? I mean, you didn't know as a kid. Yeah. So, like, I would say five. I always... Damn. Yeah, I've always had such an attraction for men at that age, I think. I just, yeah, I, like when I look at it, like my dad's friends, like, you know, I could never talk about this to my mom. I mean, she would probably... Anyway, so you were talking about um, your, your servant. Oh, uh, don't say servant. Okay, your... Um, your uh, helper. Your, yes. Mm -hmm. da dad's helper. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that part, that was really good. I'm not, I recognize you, girl. At the age of five. At age of five. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, no, no. He was so hot. I was, I, he was really built. And I just remember looking at his hands, his veiny hands. And, and I got, I was always stuck at home because I was young. I didn't go to school yet. Maybe I did. At five. No. Kindergarten point of this conversation. So, um, when did you know you were queer? Hmm. Much earlier on, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if I were to think about the definition of what that means, right? I mean, you didn't know as a kid. Yeah. So, like, I would say five. I've always... Damn. Yeah, I've always had such an attraction for men at that age, I think. I just... Yeah, I, like, when I look at it, like, my dad's friends, like, you know, I could never talk about this to my mom. I mean, she would probably freak out, but I don't know. Maybe she's... Well, mom, you've met mom. I mean, she's yeah. pretty cool. I don't think she, I think, you know... She like, would just be like, really? You had a crush on that guy? Kindergarten, yeah, maybe. But it was still much earlier on, I can't remember. But I just would swoon all over him. Like, I, he, I was always with him. I would always follow him. To the point that he would actually tell me to leave him the fuck alone. Like, he would say... Like, don't go. Like, mm -hmm. stay over there. Don't, don't come near me. And he's doing stuff for the house, cleaning, cleaning my dad's garage, fixing my dad's stuff. And then one time I can, I can remember this like so clearly. It's so weird that I still remember it. Like, it's, it's not traumatic. It's just something that you, you kind of remember, mm -hmm. right? And he was in my mom and dad's room and he was fixing the beds. I think he was putting the fitted sheet on. And he fluffed the f flat sheet, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, oh, fun! And I was like, I completely, like, I was like, oh, oh! I was like, and I dove inside as he lifted the flat sheet and it landed, like, as it was landing on me, I was, like, reaching towards, he was, like, standing in front of me and I could see his crotch. And I don't know what, like, how I got to it or how I went for it, but I just remember swooning underneath that thing, and I went for his crotch, and I unzipped his pants, and there was this thing. And I was like, I went for it. <laughs> you know I was like, I went for it. I just went to town. I was like, oh my fucking God, like... That's what I want, you know? Like, I didn't even think anything of it. I mean, I've seen it before, maybe mm -hmm. my dad's or yeah. my brother's, but I just, I mean, I didn't know that it was some sexual thing. I just went for it. What did you do? And he got hard. Oh. What did you do? I sucked it. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I was sucking it or just slobbering it. <laughs> For sure, it was way too big. <laughs> it was like, my five-year-old mouth was like, I cannot handle this. <laughs> this is not a passage part, but I guess it is. But I went for it. I was like, holy shit. Right? I mean, I didn't say that, but at that age, you don't, you have no idea what you're doing. Like, you have no idea what, what that was about. And I just went to town. And then it came in my mouth. Ooh. He did. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what I would call it now, right? But I didn't know what that was. I just knew it was something that came out. And I completely tasted it. I was like, oh, my God. Shut up. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> it's, I mean, when you think about it, I think about it now, it's like, wow, that's what it was.
Who am I? Little Nas X, hello. Yes, that is a problem area. I obviously didn't do any core work before the show, but I've, my weight has sort of both gone up and down, especially as, as an adult. Like At the beginning of the year, I was 115 pounds. Now I'm back up to 145. I don't need this thing. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah? What's up with your hair, Jesse? I was in a rush. I was getting last minute things done for the show. And she was like, oh, maybe we should dye pink. Obviously, did a really bad job at it because I was also like, oh, God, do I have all the costumes and the sound done? Jesse, your butt. I used to really like my butt. It was majestic. But that was 30 years ago. When I was dancing, probably eight hours a day, not so sedentary, and I have to tell you, it was the one asset, <laughs> no pun intended, that I thought every man wanted. And I remember one time I was playing around with this guy, he's like, man, let's take some nude photos of you. I was like, sure, no problem. Being 18, I, what did I know? So then he asked me after he's done taking the photos, what do you think is your uh, best feature? And I said, my ass, of course. I said, no, actually, your best asset is your smile. Yeah, what about your teeth, Jesse? I don't know if you can see it from off stage, but I have this one tooth that is loose. And I haven't wanted to go to the dentist because of COVID, because my bandages are screwed up. But yes, I, always, I do worry about it like falling out, especially right now, which is why I'm trying not to play with it. But it is a problem. Um, They're stretch marks, you know, from being too fat or from losing weight. And he looked at me and was like, you lost weight? I said, like, fuck you. Hey, what about your facial hair, Jesse? Ah. Uh, okay, yes, I think men with facial hair are hot. And I, like, it's a symbol of being masculine. I wish I could have facial hair. I tried it in 2019. Only here and here, the twain, never did the twain meet. Nothing on the side. I'm like, ah, oh, curses of being Asian. Should I? Okay. It's the average it's the average length, five, six inches. I mean, do you really need more? I know in the gay community, like it is prized to be whatever, nine, ten inches. But what are you gonna do with nine or ten inches? For God's sake. So I've come to peace with, you know, this is my endowment. I'm happy with it. I've had plenty of lovers who said, I love your dick. It's the perfect size. Anything else? What about those eye bags, Jesse? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they are from working too hard for you this show. Too old? <gasps> oh, the other problem area, my age. I am 53. I will be, no, I'm 52. <laughs> I'm also senile. But yes, I am old. I'm much older than these two bitches. How old are you? 25. What? 25. How old are you? 25. Ah. 30 years older than these two. And it shows that when I dance, when we rehearse, I'm like, I can, can you do the splits? Yeah, I can do the splits. Let's see. Here, here, spotlight. Uh -huh. I'll stick on my foot for you too. Can you oh, thank you. Foot? Yes, oh, look at that. That is such bad training. There you go. <laughs> uh, that deserves some applause. <laughs> All right, get up, bitch. <laughs> what about, what can you do? I can split too. Okay. It's already been done. <laughs> I can do it on my right. Oh! Oh, yes. She did much smoother. Yes. And 
she did the flourish, okay? And her foot didn't sink. Anything else? I don't know, Jesse, what else you got? I got a lot. Yep. 52 years, I have a lot of problem areas. Are you proud of your foot? I love my feet. I used to think that they were just hideous because they're so wide across the metatarsal, which it makes it a real bitch finding women's shoes and men's shoes. I'm like, oh my God, like I have a size eight and a half foot, extra wide. So hard to find shoes, but I remember I was taking class one time and I was in a relevant. I haven't taken class for a while, but um, I was telling some. I hate my feet. They're so wide, and they sweat. And um, I remember this other dancer told me, don't uh, be proud of your feet. Your feet are the reason you can stay and relevate for uh, basically however long you want to. You have more surface area. So I've grown to love my feet. And that's the that's thing about problem areas. At some point, you grow to accept them and to love them again because they are advantages. Like my height, because I'm shorter than this school. Okay. But, you know, short people have their advantages because we are sneaky. And we can do shit like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else, Alka?
came in, Renee and Arnold, and I slept with mom and dad because I was much younger. And I just remember like having laid around in that room with my cousin and he locked the door. He took completely like just slammed it and locked it. And the maid was outside actually ironing. I think she was ironing. She could hear us, we were playing around. And, um, and my cousin kind of got undressed and he was like, he was like, yay, let's play around. And like, you know, and he was much older than I am. And I thought, okay. And so I like took my clothes off and we, again, I was like, look at his body. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm not, you know. I was attracted to him. But you're not boy. But I didn't, yeah, but I didn't know mm -hmm. what that was about. It wasn't like he was the, the, the helper. How old were you? I think I must have been four or five. Oh my God, you keep getting younger. <laughs> it might, might have been four or five. It might have been five. I can't remember now. It had to be five. Um, anyway, so we're like in that room and we're fooling around. Like, he wanted to penetrate me. Because he was telling me that he didn't see it. I was like, what does that mean? Like, 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 what do you mean, like, penetrate? I was like, yeah. Shoot, Ron, here. <laughs> So this is the Q&A portion. Yeah, wow, this is really loud. <laughs> Are you queer, Kevin? Yeah, I'm queer. Um, why? Um, well, so when I was growing up, I used to think of myself as just gay. Um, and then it wasn't until college where I started to explore what it meant to be gay, that I realized maybe it's not just being, you know, homosexual. It's about queering things up. Um, and you mean that's like, um, like where your identity is tied just to your sexuality, or you're talking about sort of an embracing a larger sort of ideology? I, I mean, I initially thought it was just about sex. Um, when I first started thinking about my queer identity, I was thinking about like open relationships and polyamory. And while I myself do not currently practice a poly polyamory, um, I completely understand it, I get it, I can see why people do it, and it makes sense, and it's very comfortable for them. I'm just not in it right now. Well, it's fun. I remember reading something on Facebook or, I don't know, Medium, and it was about what monogamy actually is. And monogamy isn't necessarily sexual monogamy, it's emotional monogamy. I think that's what people talk about, or what they mean when they say they're monogamous. They're emotionally faithful to one person, which means they can have sex with whoever they want, as long as they're sort of, there's home base is always there. They always return to that. I remember that was my first marriage. We were monogamous at first, but I just could not control myself because I was 20, I was in my early 20s. I had just moved here and man, I was just went crazy. I was like, I remember one time he went to work and I just, I walked out of the apartment building and this guy passed by me and it's like, we lock eyes and we're like, why don't you come upstairs? And we fool around. And he's like, oh, I'm on my way to therapy. I'm like, <laughs> like, ridiculous. I met him 30 years later at a sex club. And he's like, do you remember me? I'm like, no. And then I was like, oh, shit. You are that man I met 30 years ago. And like, we fooled around and you felt so guilty you had to go talk to your therapist about it. So this is like really, um, so yeah. Anyway, the point is I could not, I could not maintain sexual monogamy. So eventually, we opened up the relationship, which destroyed the marriage. And like, uh, because I was not emotionally faithful to him, I fell in love with someone else. And he just was like, one day, it was just apparent to him that I had feelings for someone else, and he said, I think we should get divorced. And for me, it was like, it's convenient at the time. Like, yeah, sure, great. Then I can go pursue this other man, which then he fucked me over too. So it was a terrible, terrible time. Like, it was uh, my Saturn return. So I was 30 and everything went wrong. But right, you know, like my career was picking up, I had a, like a real job. 
And I was like, like I feel like an adult, except for my, my uh, relationship. It was terrible. I was single for like five years, which is the longest time in my life I've ever been single. It was awful. I mean, like my friends can tell you, oh my God, she was a nightmare. <laughs> so Salka, are you queer? Yeah. Yeah. What makes you queer? Um, both sexuality and identity. So one time you said you were fake. You, you called yourself a fake. Oh. <sighs> Okay. So, um, let's talk about the uh, identity portion. Okay. Um, ever since I was little, I struggled to fit in certain, like, gender role. And I think I, well, I grew up somewhere in Asia, which is Japan, <laughs> <laughs> in Tokyo. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure it was Tokyo. I don't believe myself. But yeah, I grew up not here, not in the States, you know. And then, um, so I don't know what it's like for kids in the States, but um, I feel like there was a lot of gender roles that was imposed to young kids as well. For example, like, um, school uniforms starts at kindergarten. Girls wear skirt, skirts. I uh, don't remember exactly, but like, or like, um, you know, color pink is associated with girls. I liked blue a lot better. Uh, what cartoon do you like? You know, like Ultraman or some magical something something girl thing. <laughs> But I don't know. I've never seen Sailor Moon, and uh, I don't know. I don't know the name of characters either, which I'm pretty sure the name of the stars or something. I don't know. <laughs> what? Wait, what? What is Sailor Moon? <laughs> Sailor Moon are planets. A oh, planet. Okay. So you're the more feminine. Yeah. Yeah, that's how bad I am at Sailor Moon and all the general girl stuff. Wait, so you need to be a girl to be a, a fake lesbian? No, I don't think so. That's what I'm talking Like, I was talking about sexuality, you know. Oh. I think I can go by bisexual for the most part. And that's what I've been trying. <laughs> what about you? Huh? What do you think about? About. Well, what does queer mean to you? Well, I like to always refer to this quote by Delphos, which is, um, she says, queer um, can include your sexuality. It doesn't have to, but mostly queer is about being at odds with the commonplace, with um, what is considered normative. And it's, queer is always trying to make a space for itself in that form. And I just always like that because it, it harkens back to like the, you know, the dictionary definition of queer as being uh, unusual, strange, odd. And I just I think of myself as pretty odd. I mean, when I look at my family, I'm like, well, black sheep, definitely. Like, my sister is a little not, she's a little more on the conservative side, but not as, con my brother's a little more uptight because he was the oldest and, you know, but, you know, like he was the firstborn, so I had to be responsible. My sister and I got to, you know, like the benefits of being in that birth order. Like I was the middle child, she was the youngest. So she got to be pampered, and I was just, they didn't know what to do with me. So I was the artist, I was the weird one. I'm sorry, do you think the artists are the weird ones? They can be. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I I'm think not offended at all. Huh? I'm not offended at all. But like, I don't know. I don't know what's considered normal. You know what I mean? So what, what, what do you think then? What is queer to you? Um, I, again, like it's the label that people just decided to put on people that are not heterosexual to me. So they understand what we are. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> Oh, she's saying that queer is a label that people put on people who are queer. So 
So like straight people. Yeah, they want to know what queer is, but like they don't really, really understand probably. Like some people like to have terminology on everything. So it feels like they understand, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know, like, I definitely have had issues with it because I've I dated an older man who hate the word queer because it was an insult. It was used as a, uh, in a derogatory fashion. Like, you're queer, you're gay, you're, you're effeminate, you're whatever, you're strange, and you don't fit in with us. So as a way to sort of other that, that person who is marginalized, usually gay, maybe not always, but you know, queer was always an insult. And so I like being able to like take that word back and reclaim it and say I have I'm using this term so you can't use it to hurt me anymore because I am proudly queer and I'm it's, and in all its facets like my sexuality like what I do for a living who I you know how I dress <laughs> I don't what do you, what is your definition of queer Kevin? Um. Well, I think of queer as just going against, no, well, I mean, I guess, so we've had this discussion many times, and you've been saying like queer going against like the norm or the mainstream, and I've been having a really hard time sitting with that, right? Yeah. Because I feel like if people who are queer are going against the mainstream, but it's defined as going against the mainstream, you're doing what queer is, which is going against the mainstream. So at that point, are you queer? for going against the mainstream, or are you normal for being queer for going against the mainstream? Right? <laughs> right. You're hurting my head. That was a really great logic trap. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can answer that. That's, That's never like that. all goth people are queer. Wait, but then like, like, like straight people were the people who are like, you're queer. So can straight people yeah. be queer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Really? Yeah, like if you're saying like if sexuality is tied into them, they're, they have, they're in a polyamorous relationship, they are something that's outside of the normative. That's pretty queer to me. And like if they have values that are outside of like um, capitalist values, you know, like maybe like skewing more towards the socialist side, I think of that as a queer ideology. You know, like we want to lift everyone up. That's super queer to me because America is not set up that way. America is set to reward the rich. So, like, yeah, if you're talking about, like, from the bottom up, that is a, I think that's a queer idea. I, yeah. I know people who are queer that way. So in that way, it's, it's queering the expectation, queering the definitions of what is expected, what is normative. Hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, you, are you out to your family? Have you told your family I'm gay or queer? No, actually. Why not? Um, well, I've never actually said the words I'm gay or I'm queer to my family. But I brought up my relationship problems, and I brought up me being in a relationship and having a boyfriend, but never saying the words, I'm gay. But you've used the word boyfriend. Yeah, to one of my sisters. So the rest of them, I just call them my partner. Like your business partner? You know, like my, what, my partner. My right, partner. but it's like the association with partner. Like, could be a lot of things. Yeah. Whereas boyfriend is very definitive. Like, that's someone you're in sexual relationship. You know, I'm just trying to challenge the idea that straight people made the word queer. So if I say the word partner, I'm going to let them decide whatever the heck they want to decide. But why wouldn't you want to take ownership and say, this is how I define it? Because I already understand how I define it. So I feel like I don't need to say it to someone else if they can do the work to be more open about the idea that this person could be a partner in any kind of way and there's no problem with that. Are you out here, Pam? Um, I think I told my mom, because I feel like I didn't want to, dis I'm sorry, I have homosexual sex. And I, I don't know, I don't remember if I said I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> There's nothing to be sorry, but it was hard for her to understand. There was like nothing like, oh, I can't believe you did that, or like, how did you do that? <laughs> like, there's no questions like that. But I remember it was the night where I was in Tokyo, like I was just having a break and I was in Tokyo. And that was, happened to be the 
pride parade <laughs> day. I didn't intend because I didn't really, uh, wasn't really updated. <laughs> and there was like documentary going on on the TV at the same time and I was like, oh my God, like I just did some, I don't know, it was convenient for her because it was on and she was just watching the TV. I remember her watching the TV trying to like understand something out of the documentary because she's not so familiar with the idea at all. And I'm not out to other people. I think I know, I think a few of my friends back in Tokyo knows, but um, not really. I don't really want to. Yeah, and speaking of which, I don't, I can't not come up with the word in my, uh, word in my first language that indicates the word queer. Uh, I think they would say, like, literally homosexual. Which is? Dosei. Or dosei sha. Dosei. Same sex love. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. But, like, um, I don't know, like, generally how people would feel about it. Like, it can be insulting. I don't know, like anyways, like it's so, it's such an idea that it's so unfamiliar and uh, where I grew up. It's kind of like a little work for me to explain to them and I don't think it matters to like not only my family in Japan or like anyone here unless I'm in like uh, an actual uh, romantic or sexual relationship with. I don't think it does, does it? Like, I don't care. Hey, I never came out to my family, because I didn't care either. Yeah, like, I don't really care what people think of me. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's ask Jesse. Have you, are you out to your family? Did you tell your family? I am out to my family, but I didn't come out to my family. I was actually outed by my sister. And it happened when I was in the hospital. Um, my T-cells dropped so low. took me to the hospital, and they called my parents. My parents have never visited me in San Francisco. They've never seen where I live. They referred to my husband of seven years as my friend. They still refer to my current partner as my friend. They refer to my previous fiance as my friend. Um, but they know because my sister told them, because when I was in the hospital, she, decided, she made the decision that the doctor was going to tell them that I had AIDS and that they should probably know because they could put two and two together. So when I became conscious, I actually, she told me, like, Jesse, I have to tell you something. I had to out you to mom and dad. And I had to think about it for a minute, but I was like, thank you so much for doing what I didn't have the courage for 40 years to do. So I was like, thank you for doing that. Like, that's a weight off my shoulder. And again, we're still, we don't talk about it, like typical Asian family. They don't want to know. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah. maybe like, <laughs> that's sort of my assumption. But I also, like, I'm super uncomfortable with bringing it up. So I don't. I mean, I've tried to force the issue. I'm like, he's my fiance or he is my partner, my boyfriend. My boyfriend sent you that, ch that box of chocolates for your birthday. I don't know. Like, a friend of mine said, oh, that's just your mother's homophobia. And I was offended. Like, excuse me? My mother's not homophobic. I thought about it. I was like, oh, yes, she is. This, is. this is one of those pernicious ways that homophobia takes form. And it's like not acknowledging who you are. He's like, I am obviously gay. I mean, come on, the red flags. I moved to San Francisco. I became a dancer. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I lived with a man for seven years. And then for another, another four years, with another man. So, And then my current, my current boyfriend, although I do refer to him as my husband sometimes. I don't know if, he, I don't know if he's okay with that, but, you know, <laughs> I kind of feel like after seven years, we're married. You can ask him. I could. <laughs> <laughs>
It's not like they haven't seen it before. This is true, but they've never seen it like with the knowledge. Like, this is happening in public. You know, <laughs> that is, you know, like it's about being Filipinos, like about propriety, about being proper. It's like you don't pull your pants down in public, although I've done it a lot of times. So, not a surprise. Anyway, have you have any questions? Sawako, do you want kids? Why not? Do you want kids? I want kids. I know you'll be a really great father. Well, thank you. Jesse, do you want kids? You know, when I got into the hospital, when I was with my fiance, I thought about it a lot because I saw him with like younger men and like he would do things like teach him how to tie a tie. And I thought, that is like so lovely. You would be a great mm -hmm. parent. And like whatever, I'm the gunkel for a lot of a lot of my friends. <laughs> children like, oh, that's that's your tita, that's your Lola, whatever. I'm like, <laughs> but it's like I am that gay relative, the gay uncle. And like I love children, some children. I don't love all children. Some children are like, oh God, you got here a fucking brat, and you're going to be in hell when you grow up, and I do not like you. Uh, but there's some like I just get along so I'm like, and I think, oh, I would love to have a child. Like my ex-girlfriend, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty tight with her and her son, who was her daughter. I'm like, Right. Amazing. And it's like, wow, that could have been our child. Our child could have been trans. Oh. But yeah, like, I'm, you're a perfect Kinsey Six girl. You have never been with a woman, right? Nope. Never have. And you've obviously been with a woman and a man. Yeah. So have I. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't want kids. That's, that's too much work. <laughs> I agree. Like, like, you don't have to carry a child, like, bear a child in your belly for nine months or more and take time to recover to get back to dancing. I have to do that if I wanted to have my own biological child and I don't have time for that. You can adopt. I mean, that's, yeah. that's um, that was it, like, what I was going to think about. No. Like, there are so many children out there who need no. parents. No. I'm pretty sure I'll end up taking the mother's role and I'm not confident in doing that. Then I can adopt a child. <laughs> you raise my children. <laughs> <laughs> I donate my egg to you. <laughs> you raise my children. <laughs> what? So you can have your own biological child. But he's going to raise my child. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I adopt kids. Okay. And then let him <laughs> raise. Oh, I see. So you adopt the kid. Yeah. And then you give me your eggs. Yeah, so you can have kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad we worked all this out tonight. <laughs> but like you, I, I agree. Like, I know how selfish I am. Like, I have things I want to do. Like, I, I would feel really bad about saying, hey, baby, mama needs to get laid, so you have to take care of yourself for, like, two hours. Or, like, I need to go out and have a drink, so, you know, like, go with Auntie uh, Sawako or Uncle Kevin. Like, yeah, I wouldn't, feel, I wouldn't feel right about that, but I know myself. Like, sorry, no college. I need a new laptop. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm selfish, I know that. Yeah, I don't know. I feel selfish to have kids. Yeah, but you obviously are not. I want kids. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that, boyfriend? I feel like we should go out in the audience and ask questions of you guys. Should I? Do it. Okay. Since this is wireless. So, you. Do you identify as queer? Yeah, actually, I started, <laughs> I started identifying as queer in high school back in the 80s. I really liked the idea, really liked the idea of, of taking, taking myself out of this sort of binary, you know, I am gay or I am straight. So it, queer sort of offered me that option. Moving on. Do you identify as queer? Um, I would say labels aren't that important to me, but I probably, if I had to have one, just still identify as gay, like I have for a long time. Really? Okay. 
We'll start at the top and work our way down. <laughs> Take your time, Jesse. Take your time. Do you identify as queer? <sighs> no. <laughs> no. Let's work our way through the audience. And you. Do you identify as queer? Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. I'm on my way to define myself as queer. <laughs> you do or don't? I am in the process. Okay. That's always good. And how about you, Miss Thing? Uh, <clears throat> I prefer omnivore. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about food, girl. <laughs> and how about you? Yes? Yeah. And you? Ah. Awesome. Yay. How about Look. Definitely queer. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Slightly queer. Okay. Oh, I'm going to pass you by. I know how you identify. But you, sir? <laughs> oh, queer in a more of a classical sense. <laughs> I'm loving this for the audience participation. Like, this is show in and of itself. And you, do you identify as queer? Happy and gay. Fair enough. And no. And no. Okay. okay. Last two victims. Your question for? Yeah, you know what the question is, but are you, do you identify as queer? Actually, I've been odd my whole life. And so the way you define queer, as you're discussing up there, yes. It's been... And you, sir? Of course I do. I, d I didn't used to, though. Why not? I just didn't think I was queer. It just felt normal. I, I just like guys a lot. That wasn't, that wasn't queer. But now that's changed. Okay. Fair enough. Moving on to the next portion of our evening. Thank you so much for playing.
been dragged through the dirt But come on, get back up It's time to live And if you give your love to me I'm gonna keep it carefully So deep in the treasure chest Below my breast Comes out of all the people I've known The places I've been The songs that I've sung The wonders I've seen Now that the dreams are all coming true Who is the one that leads me on through? It's you Who puts me in the magic position, darling, now You put me in the magic position, darling, so Let me put you in the magic position, darling So many thank yous. Thank you for, thank you to the festival for hosting us. Again, this is our sixth consecutive year, and we're so lucky to get this theater. <laughs> uh, um, and especially coming out of lockdown, it's like, oh God, yes, please let us perform. It's been a year. 
I'm hungry for it. And really, to be underneath lights and to have a nice floor, oh, so loving it. Um, so thank you to Andrew, to Stephanie, to our fantastic technician who worked on the fly, Evan. <laughs> Scott, who saved us at the very last minute by running sound. Thank you so much. The people who work the door, Snaps. Um, thanks to uh, the organization that made this Our Work Possible Safe House for the Arts, which we are all three of us are resident artists at, so if you're interested, safehousearts.org. Kevin and Sauk are performing on November 20th. So please come and see that. We're in the Tenderloin on Eddy Street. Fabulous little theater. A little lively, but um, Kev, I can't wait to see what Kevin does. I cannot wait to see what Sauko has planned. So please come support them. Um, thank you to my fantastic partner slash husband, Bob, for, for being tech support, for being emotional support, and for being our lift. Um, thank you so much. And thank you to my former dancers who showed up, Denise and Arnell, who was supposed to be in this piece but had to bow because of an injury. So some of the material was definitely generously contributed by him, if you, can, if you couldn't tell whose voice that was. <laughs> that was hers. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Gregory, for being a fabulous photographer and documenting so much of what we had and for being a part of the process. Oh, man, thank you for the people who donated. You know who you are. <laughs> and I think that's it. So yeah, um, follow us on Facebook, Steamroller Dance Company. There's also a Steamroller Fan Club. Just send me a request, I will, I will let you in. And you know, keep abreast of what we're doing, because I think we're taking a break after this. This was a harrowing experience, I must say. You know, coming out and COVID and just other people's schedules. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we pulled it off. Like, amazing, we pulled it off. So, thank you, Kevin and Sacco, for being just awesome. <laughs> and for being so vulnerable in just the talking portion. Like, okay, she went there. Good. Yeah. And thank you for pulling my pants down. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Thank you. You guys are free to go. Mama needs a drink.